the negotiators won't be the only people hoping for success. Business is going to be watching very carefully. Perhaps no business more than Better Place. That's a Silicon Valley startup. They want to bring the electric car and the infrastructure necessary uh, for it to the rest of the world. And we're joined by the, the CEO of that company. Thank you very much for joining us, Mr. Agassi. Thank you for having me. We're in Copenhagen. Let's talk about Denmark. This is one of the places where you're making your big push along with Israel. That's right. What Explain to me exactly what you want to do for the electric car with your company here. Well, we're the infrastructure company that makes electric cars convenient and affordable. You, uh, When you drive an electric car, you need a place to charge it. So we put charging spots across the country as well as homes and workplaces. And we put battery switch stations so that when you drive your electric car longer than the distance of the technology today, the battery distance today, we're allowing you to switch the battery and keep going at a faster uh, time than it would take you to uh, fuel up on your uh, gasoline car. There's a lot of components necessary for this. Obviously, one of the reasons why you chose Denmark is the, co the, 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 the government. I understand that a consumer gets, if they buy an electric car, they get a $40,000 tax rebate. Explain that from, from the government. Well, It's got to be expensive cars, right? Some cars cost less than $40,000. Well, in Denmark, they have a taxation that is gradual. It goes from 100% all the way up to 180%, depending on the type of the car and the size of the car. So if you buy a car here, you pay the company once for the cost of the car, and you pay the tax man twice? Uh, pretty much so. Oh. They also have uh, a rule that's been in place that uh, on zero emission cars, you pay zero tax. And so there's a huge tax taxation difference between gasoline cars and electric cars, which makes electric cars significantly more attractive. So do they consumers. not get taxed, the electric cars? Zero, zero tax and on electric cars. what are the other cars? sort of pieces of the puzzle that, that uh, the government is providing? Here? Well, you, you, you need somebody to coordinate the, uh, the effort across all government uh, offices. Connie Hadegaard, the former minister of climate here, was uh, a great champion under the, the uh, supervision of the uh, prime minister and the new uh, uh, secretary of climate is uh, continuing that support. We have uh, permits to continue to, to provide, uh, to put our stations everywhere we needed. We have a great partner in Dong Energy, the uh, local utility, which is generating uh, a lot of its energy now from uh, windmills. Uh, so it's, there's a, a holistic uh, system that allows us to come in and put our, uh, our solution in place. How many charge spots have you got out there now? In well, we're, we're, uh, we're installing uh, across the country Mm -hmm. About 10,000 spots uh, over the next two years. How many have you got working? Right We've now? got about uh, a bit less than 100 for the show, for the conference here. Yeah. Um, and we're going to start installing across the country. And most of these stations are coming into the home and the workplace of the people who subscribe to the How cars. many electric cars are on the road in Denmark? Oh, right now? Yeah. Uh, probably the same number. It's uh, less than 50 cars that uh, were brought in for the show. Uh, by... Uh, 2011, 12, we're expecting to see about a thousand cars coming every month. So in January of this year, you reportedly said you saw a hundred thousand charge spots in place by 2010, and you said you, you, you thought there, there could be several thousand electric cars running on the roads. 2011, that was by the 2011. number. By 2011. Right. So that's well, okay, let's imagine it's 2011. Right. What, it doesn't seem to be taking off. What no, it is. It's not a linear process. So what you need to remember is uh, when you bring in this kind of innovation, you don't go out on day one and install 100,000 spots. Mm -hmm. You put a system in place, you test it, you see the, uh, the success, you debug it, you fix out issues that you find, and then you install more and more and more. And you do it in, effectively in a sort of an exponential uh, growth. We, what we've done today, which is a great achievement, we have the first managed electric car charging network across Copenhagen. Uh, where we can actually see every single spot, every battery, every person who charged. We can do billing, we can manage them, we can maintain them all from a single console anywhere in the world. Right. That is a major achievement. It's never been done before. We now know we can install them, we know they work, and now we can scale them to any number we want. So right now you can deal with Renault's cars and batteries. Mm -hmm. Do you have any other partners lined up to that? that your stations would work with? Well, we're working with a number of car makers. Uh, none of them has been announced yet. Uh, Renault has obviously come out uh, just recently in September of this year and demonstrated four cars uh, that would fit this model. Uh, right. And Renault has actually gained, as a result of that, a significant advantage. We've placed an order for 100,000 electric cars with Renault. It's the biggest order in the car industry in a very, very long time, more than $3.5 billion. So this is a great, great boon for, uh, for Renault. We're going to have to leave it there. We wish you well. Thank you very much for Thank your you time. Thank you very much.